this is Laurel of the Dabbling Hook. How are you today? I am a little tired. Um, it's gloomy. It's rainy. <sighs> it's Thanksgiving week. Short weeks are always the worst, aren't they? I shouldn't say worst. They're just more, they seem a little more stressful because there's just so much to be done in a short time. Anyway, I'm stealing a few minutes to make this video because I felt like it. Um, if it looks a little glary, it's because it's rainy and gloomy out and lighting is bad. And I've said before, lighting in here is not the greatest. So my ot light is on and we'll see how that goes. Um, what are we going to talk about today? Um, we are going to talk about um, whips, whips slash commissions acquisitions, finished objects, and my craft fairs, the giveaway winner, and Oprah. That's right. Oprah. I don't know why I do that. Hmm. <laughs> I never realized I did it until I started making videos. Anyway, what shall we start with first? Let's start with whips let's start with whips um excuse any rustling i tried to oh what am i wearing let's do that first i am wearing um sorry i have to bend down a little because i did something to my tripod and i can't get it back up to its full height so bear with okay i'm wearing i think this is the second or third beanie i have knitted it is done in loops and threads um, color wool. It's the 50% wool. Oh, Minion 2 is coming. He doesn't know I'm recording. Hey. Hi. Come say hi to YouTube. Come on. Just for a second. Come over here. Everyone wants to see you. Who's everyone? Him and <sighs> three people. Z, Debbie, and Seta and Angelia and Wanda and a whole bunch of other people. Come over here. Z especially, because you guys haven't said hi to her in a long time. Say hi. He's always eating. The Dabbling Hook fam. Dorian dubbed everyone that, by the way. The Dabbling Hook fam. This, <laughs> this is Minion 2, otherwise known as Sebastian. Say hi, Sebastian. Hi, Sebastian. You gotta look at them, though, when you... Hi, Sebastian. You gotta come down a little. Mm. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Oh, hold on. Everyone here? Don't yell at me, Sebastian. Can I else? Just one. Okay, he asked for Oreos. I close to hate Oreos. I dislike them very much. But I was at TJ Maxx and I spotted these things wrapped in, you know, foil, colorful in this tube. Bought it and said, oh, chocolate covered Oreos. I'm like, oh, the kids would like it. Tried one, it is really good. So they don't have it there all the time, just occasionally. So every time I go there, which is very much occasionally, I look for it. And they haven't had it the last three times I went. And today I was in line, and the guy was putting it out today. So I took one, and as he's putting it out, I go, well, maybe just another one. So I decided I was going to give one pack to each of my teammates. And then I picked another one and another one. So I left with four. So that's what he's eating now. Big digression. But anyway, since they're so grumpy now, this is what they look like. Oh, good Lord. He was two years old and his brother was four. Look at those faces. Uh, this is what keeps me from Homer Simpsoning them. Homer Simpsoning them, which is when he does this to Bart. This. I keep this at my desk to remember how nice they were. <laughs> I miss them. <laughs> I love the grumps now, but I miss them. Anyway. 
big digression. Where was I? I don't remember where I was, but anyway. Um, <laughs> whips. I am working on a baby hat. Knitted. Because this is what I took to. I had two craft fairs. I had one Saturday, one Sunday. Don't know what possessed me to do that, but I have the same coming up this Saturday and Sunday. <sighs> What's done is done. Anyway. Um, so I decided to take, I take, I used to take obviously just crochet before I knitted. And now I take at least one of each. And I was working on um, one that I finished, which I'll show in finished objects. But this is the one I'm working on now. It's just a plain, I did um, the twisted rib on this. It takes a little longer. Uh, and then sometimes you forget and you try to do the, the regular knit stitch instead of in the back loop. And, but I like the way it looks. And it gives it just a little more um, cinch. So sometimes I don't want to switch needles. I don't like to start with the smaller one and go up to the higher one. So I find that doing the um, twisted rib helps a little if you, stick, if you stick to the same needle size. Just what I think. Um, so this is just a plain one. And um, I am using, which is falling apart here. I am using Bernat. Oh, yeah, that's not going to help. Bernat Super Value Stripes. And since I've already done a whole hat out of it, this is what it looks like. It's basically grays and blues and whites. And this is looks black, but it's more like a dark charcoal-y color. But anyway, that's what I am using. And that's what I'm working on. I started this at the craft fair yesterday, so... Um, I think I'm about halfway oops, halfway through. The other one I had started um, the night before the first craft fair, the Saturday craft fair, and I finished it at the Saturday craft fair. So it took me a day, I guess. And it's worsted weight yarn, so <gasps> it's getting better. And I'm using a 12-inch... Um, circular needle wooden I think they're chow goose but anyway so that's what I'm working on the other thing I'm working on finally I need to finish um, one of my commissions or my custom orders is um, the giraffe that that person wanted um, I need to finish it because I need to take it with me on the first to my craft fair um, so I had done all the parts the legs the arms tail blah 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 all that um, and then I did the head but I didn't have um, big enough eyes so I decided to use these flat buttons instead and I am not happy with it so these are just sewn on um, and then I didn't have a light color in Red Heart because um, I like to use Red Heart Super Saver a lot for my amigurumis so I'm using um, the Stitch Studio Classic and it's thicker than the Red Heart so this was bugging me so, I did this one yesterday. I bought a cream color. Um, is that the buff color? No, cream. Whatever it is. Bought the Red Heart, and I redid it, and I had ordered safety eyes. So, these are 15 millimeter safety eyes, and those came in last week. So, I redid the head um, last night, because this one, I never finished it. So, I'm thinking I'm going to... Um, take out the eyes and then um, stitch on eyes instead and make it into a lovey with just the head. Um, so that's done. So I just need to work on the body where I have to somehow incorporate that heart from another pattern and um, put it all together. So I have a week to finish that. I need to focus on that, but my focus just... Anyway, too many things. Okay, so that's that, that's that. Um, I'm also working on a two-button cowl. Um, I'll talk about those in the craft fair as well. And commissions. I have one, two, three, four, five of them to do. I have to do a cowl. I have to do a hat for a repeat customer. I have to do two owl hats for another repeat customer. Um, those two are at work. And it's for her daughters. So um, the ones I made for them last year, they're grown out of it. So she ordered two more. Um... And then from the craft fair, I had somebody who liked the color waves um, 
beanie, which was part of the holiday or is part of the holiday stash down hosted by the underground crafter. Um, I'll put the link to that below. Um, she liked it at the fair, but she wanted something lighter because she walks um, her dog at night and all that. So she wanted something lighter. So um, I have to start that in a cream color for her. And then an, an ex coworker ordered a um, two hats for her daughter. One's a messy bun and one's just a hat I guess I pick because she wasn't very specific. She just wanted to um, give me the business instead of somebody else, which I am grateful for. Okay. Oh, actually, before he interrupted what I was wearing. So I was saying this is um, either the second or third beanie that I knitted and I was super pleased with how it turned out. Um, and like I said, it's in um, color wool. I think it's color wool. But it is, um, it's a 50% wool, so it's a little, a little bit itchy and I have to keep futzing with it um, when it's on my skin for too long. Um, by Loops and Threads Impeccable. So, and it's got a pom-pom. So I made this last year or the year before? Uh, probably the year before because I wore it a lot last winter. And then I was wearing this um, in the last video when I was outside and I forgot to mention what it is. This is the... Artfully Simple Infinity Scarf by Moogly, Tamara Kelly of Moogly Blog. Um, I used to make a lot of these and surprisingly they were very popular. This one happens to just be a bunch of scraps that I had. This is Loops and Threads Charisma. This is Claudia's favorite yarn, Homespun. <laughs> homespun. Um, more Loops and Threads, more Homespun, more Loops and Threads. So yeah, I think I was just using up um, chunky number five um, and number six chunky yarn so the way it is I'm not gonna take it off right now because my mic is is hooked on but the way it's worn and I'll try to insert a picture um, it basically hangs around your neck um, and then there's a, a cord that you crochet that you put on a button on one end that you can put it around it actually let me see pardon the noise which is gonna be so it just hangs like here and then the loop goes around it that way and I tend sorry sorry okay I'm all out of out of whack okay oh, mess. so I just tend to throw it over my shoulder most times so Artfully Simple Infinity Cowl. Um, yeah, they were popular when I made it, I think, two or three years ago was the last time I really made it. Maybe three years ago. Um, surprisingly, they were popular at my fairs, and I, I always made them in solid colors, really. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, thank you guys so much for anyone who, one, purchased from my store, but who especially purchased the new, um, the new pattern, the Nadia Cowl. I really, really, really appreciate you guys, and I really appreciate the support. So, thank you, thank you, one and all. Um, and to my testers too, I completely, completely forgot to um, thank you. You know who you are. I do appreciate you. Um, okay, what else? Mm. Oh, thanks uh, to Debbie for. Um, spotlighting I guess my um, bumpy shells uh, pattern I appreciate it once again um, I was going to show a couple of ones that I had done before that I still have I actually have them on discount because I've had them for about two years um, they're what's left that haven't sold so I'm trying to um, pare down my um, old inventory but I didn't want to dig because it was in the bottom of um, my bins and it's in the garage and it's cold so that wasn't happening um do, 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 do. what else so those were my whips finished objects um so i have finished this is the other baby hat i just did a what did i do i think it's a two by two rib so um the person who potentially is going to order this, um, she didn't give me a colorway, so I just, I just looked over and Boyd's color and I picked this. 
Um, uh, she is an ex-colleague of a cousin of mine, and he lives in, where does he live, North Carolina? Somewhere down there, I'm not sure. North Carolina, I think. But he had ordered um, as a gift for her when she had the baby, um, a lovey and um, a hat I knitted. to go with it. And so she came back through him and said that her son's growing out of it and she wanted a new hat. And I've been messaging her, but I haven't heard from her in a couple of days. But I figured, you know, I'll keep it there in case if she doesn't get back to me, um, in case somebody needs something. But he is um, six months old right now. Um, so I did a, I went on to, I'm still figuring out sizing, um, stitch count sizing for knitted hats. So. Like I said, I go on Ravelry and I find a pattern. I, I filter through the advanced uh, search and I find a pattern that's using the yarn weight and um, the sizes that I want. And I see um, which one I like and what the, the stitch counts are. So I use that and I decided to go the two by two because it stretches. So this will definitely fit um, a six to nine month and even longer. And I made it just a tube so that they can wear it as he grows older. Um, you know, she can roll it up now and then it can just turn. I love that something this small can just stretch to fit. That's one of the things I do love about knitting. But yeah. So many times while doing this, I wanted to just switch to just plain knitting, but I made myself keep going and just do the two by two because it's that break in the rhythm that, you know, daunting. And I love where the, um, the colors switch because when I fold it, it's just like a perfect brim size so you don't see it. So that's that. And this is like a darker gray, lighter gray, and it's a light sky blue, ashy blue, I guess whatever the color is um the other things that i finished so um there's a video by um oh, good knit good knit kisses um where she did a video with uh repeat craft to me sarah zimmerman uh and they did um gingerbread heads little amigurumis uh see amigurumis amies i just say amies for short but amigurumis um, in Z's last video, she was mentioning that, you know, she wasn't sure how to pronounce it or if that everyone pronounces it right anyway, but that's how I pronounce it. So as soon as I saw that, I wanted to make some of the little toys with Christmassy themes to them and I couldn't figure out what to do. Um, so I made a little Octo and I wanted it in Christmas colors. So I had a red one that I'd shown before and then the other one, I made a little hat that I stitched on the head. To me, it looked Christmassy enough because it was in the colors. Um, that one sold right away and it was actually bought by a grandma. <laughs> um, that always gives me a kick. Um, so I'll put in a picture of what that looks like. But that sold right away on Saturday. Um, but the other things that I made was, as soon as I saw the, the gingerbread ones that they were doing, I'm like, oh, perfect. I made little gingerbread octos. I mean, oops, hang on. How cool is that, huh? How cool. So, um, these um, same weight yarn, this is Bernat, this is Red Heart. The Red Heart's definitely a little fluffier, so. Um, they came out a little bigger than I intended, but, um, this one the icing looks a little thicker because I had to do it after, whereas in the video they do it, um, before they close up and I forget, I just keep going and I completely forgot I had stuffed it and everything and I'm like, oh, I forgot the icing. So I just chained and then I sewed it on, I stitched it on. This one was the surface, um, slip stitch that they did, but perfect, perfect. So I think I have a couple of other different browns. I kind of like this one a lot better, this brown. But I have a couple of different brown shades that I have um, 
because I intend to do um, some more of the loveys but little brown girl loveys in different shades so I went and found a few different browns so I might use some of that to make a couple more of these the other thing that I made out of this I made little keychain ones and one of those sold yesterday so yeah the one in this color sold yesterday and then the other thing that I did another octocorn I was debating the black eyes because it looked a little menacing, so I added a little eyebrow, eyelashes. But yeah, the um, the horn is made out of um, embroidery thread, and I have um, oh, I just put it away. I have um, this metallic sewing thread. It's not a cotton thread, though. Um, I guess it's what you would call a fashion thread. It's like tinsel, basically, really thin tinsel. So I held it together to give it a little bit of a little bit of sparkle to the horn. So yeah, my octocorn. And then the other thing um, that I have that should I talk about it now? Hang on. Whoops. My notebook is down. Okay. Um what else? Okay, so I will talk about this. So the other thing is, and this will lead into the craft fair too. Um, when I was doing the footbridge beanie, um, the pattern wasn't doing exactly what I wanted. Um, and I messed it up basically. But I ended up finishing it anyway. And um, at my last couple of craft fairs, I put this one out that I finished. So this is... I don't know if I'm going to call it a footbridge, but this is going to be version two of it. Um, and it was very, very much touched at the craft fair, except this was a smaller version and everyone wanted a bigger size, which I didn't have um, on Saturday. So I decided just to make, um, finish, write up the pattern. So it's 90% written up. Um, I actually did another one the night before, Saturday night. Um, after the craft fair and I took it to Sunday's craft fair and that sold um, but me not paying attention to my own pattern I did something wrong but it still sold so I have to remake it one more time to make sure the pattern um, instead of paying attention to the pattern I'm like yeah I know what I'm doing yeah and I was almost done and I'm like why does it look not the same because I didn't pay attention um, so this will be, and I said I wasn't going to really do another pattern until probably after the holidays, but um, it was pretty much taking from the footbridge and adding a few more things to it. So um, this will be written up, and um, I am looking for three testers. So if you would like to test, um, and you can knit, email me, it'll be below, and let me know, and I will pick the first three people um, I just blanked <laughs> um, so yeah if you can knit um, and you can stick to a deadline then you know I'm not like okay I need it in like two days or anything like that but I need to hear back from you and I need to honest feedback constructive criticism is what um, someone I used to work with always said, it's not um, constructive feedback, not criticism. It's constructive feedback is what I'm looking for. So if you knit and you would like to test this out for me, let me know. Um, doesn't have a name yet. I have an idea of what it is, but I'm not sure yet. But anyway, so that's that. Those are the finished objects. Um, acquisitions, acquisitions. I acquired uh, one skein of Thick and Quick in the what's it, Fisherman colorway, which um, that hat I mentioned, this hat that sold. I'll put a picture of them um, on, the, on the screen. That sold yesterday right off. So um, that kind of gave me the push to like, yeah, just write the pattern up and see how that goes. 
But, um, so that was my acquisition. The other thing is, I have such a mess next to me. You know that? Darn good yarn came. I said I was only gonna do it. I signed up under Z's um, code, and I said I was only gonna do it. Oh, this is starting to be a little itchy um, for three months, but this is month two. I might let it go a little longer just to see. Um, but you guys have probably have already seen others do this one. It is 50 grams, 50 yards. Um, medium pulled silk. Calls for four and a half to five and a half in knitting or five and a half to six and a half crochet hook. It's very rustic is a word I guess I would use. It's not smooth and polished or anything like that. You know, it's reclaimed. So that's what it looks like. Not a clue what I'm going to do with it. Just like I have the other one still up there. It hasn't spoken to me yet. Um, and it does come with two patterns. This is the... Oh, sorry for the light glare. Oh, there you go. This is the knit one. And this is the crochet one. And the crochet one is, um, I think it uses the waistcoat, waistcoat stitch. I could be wrong. Nope. I see half double crochets. So I have no idea what it uses. But I'm surprised, though, this would be able to knit this one little cowl. But I might just give it a try to see. We'll see. So that's that. And then you hear all the, it came with balls. So, um, Randy of Random Randy's Rambling, Randy's Random Ramblings. Oh, why can we never get that right? It'll be below. She, um, in her last video, she did um, these little white and red octopuses. Um, and again, I was looking for Christmas themed one and I already done the the red and white thing but on the top of hers she had these Christmas bells I'm like oh, genius so I already told her I'm going to borrow her idea and then I remember that I had these so it's perfect 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 timing so she has um, graciously told me go ahead so I will be borrowing her idea for that and adding it to my version of the octopuses um, I think that's it for acquisitions. I'm trying really hard. I drove today to get gas because, you know, I'm commuting tomorrow. And twice I almost went into Michael's and I resisted the urge. I didn't. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. Um, I do have nitpicks coming. I did not buy a lot of the yarn. It was when they had the dollar. I think it was the dollar sale. Uh, I think I may have bought, 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 bought. I think I may have bought like 10 skeins of Brava Bulky, but only because I am planning on making um, one of the Moogly shawls again. Um, the brown butter shawl, the one that's sold, but I don't know if I'm going to do it in the multicolor. I might just stick to whatever colors that I, I think I bought five of each colorways of whichever one, I don't remember. And they also had books on sales too, so I bought, I think I bought two or three books as well. So. We shall see. And I may have bought like two. Yeah. It's noisy. Completely forgotten that I'm recording here, but life noises. Um, so I might have bought two of each of the books that I got for future giveaways. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure of one of them I bought two. Okay. Um, and I think they were knit books. Maybe one was a crochet. I don't remember. It's the spur of the moment. You get the email, you go see, and, you know, I'm not as bad as Ross, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I would be, like, kicked out if my yarn buying was anything like Ross's. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Absolutely not. Um, okay, a uh, couple of things, though. Um, for 
Someone had mentioned in one of the videos that they didn't, or some video I was watching, I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was Tabitha. I don't remember. I watched so many of them. I don't remember. Um, I do watch, guys. I just don't always comment because I'm just trying to watch them all, and usually I'm not in a place where I can comment. And by the time I get to somewhere, I don't remember. But um, someone had mentioned that they didn't know how to do the links down below. What I do is I put everything for an episode in a Word document. If I need to put a link, I'll go to the site, copy the link, paste it in the Word document. So I have everything there, and then when I'm ready to do the upload, I copy everything there, and I just copy it down into the description bar. And it brings over the link just fine. I haven't had an issue with that, so just a thought. Um, and someone had mentioned um, in the comments on the give for the giveaway that um, they wouldn't even know where to find a craft fair. Um, Facebook. There are groups that do craft fairs um, on Facebook, and some of them are specific to areas where you live. Uh, there are two of them that I'm in that's specific to where I live. One is more in the area that I live in, and then one is where I used to live, where my parents live, that caters more to that area. Um, but the other site that I use, it's called festivalnet.com. They just, they have listings for, you pick the state that you're in and they have listings for everywhere. So that's another place. Um, when you go on there, they give you, I think, five free um, opportunities to go in and look at a particular craft fair and look at all the details. After that, you have to, I think they still do that, but after that, you have to basically sign up. And I don't remember if it's like monthly or annual or whatever, um, but you will have access to all the information like contacts and everything. What I typically do is I go and I see what's around, and if it's something that looks like um, I'd be interested, I take, he's watching videos. Um, I would, um, what do I do? I'll take the name of the craft fair and I go search um, online to see if I can find it and if I can get a contact and blah, blah, blah. Because I don't want to sign, because I don't do craft fairs all year long, so I don't want to sign. <laughs> I don't want to sign up for something that I'm not going to use that often. Um, so I basically see what craft fairs are there, what towns they're in, and I just Google them and see if I can find it. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But Facebook is another um, resource. All right, I am taking way too long. So speaking of giveaway, I am going to insert um, the little clip I did of picking the winner and I'll be back. Hey guys, this is Laurel and I am going to pull the winner for that um, wooden hook that, I think it's an, a nine millimeter hook, but that short, chunky hook. Okay, so I have the video URL in here, and there were 49 unique commenters. So, let's see. Oh, I am using my little, uh, whatever you call it, that pad on the laptop, which I hate using. I'd rather use a mouse, and I'm horrible at it. Anyway, there we go. Dun, da, da, da. Come on. Regina Rice. I did craft shows years ago. Not been able to do any lately, and I do hope I do have hopes of doing one before Christmas. Alright. Well, Regina, thank you so very much for participating and um Email me your details of where you would like that shipped, and I will have that out to you um, soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so, Regina, congratulations. Thank you guys all for participating, for commenting um, on whether or not you've done a craft fair, what's sold, what hasn't sold, and all that good stuff. It's just great to read and see what other people's thoughts are on it and what, um, what they've done in the past. Um, how it's been and all that. So thank you and congratulations again and my email is down below and Let me know so I can mail that out for you and oh, I decided to bring it this time Just to show oops 
from the hook. And it is a 10 millimeter. All right. So send me an email and I will have that out to you as soon as possible. Okay, um, Oprah, so, um, the hubby got me, got two tickets to go see Oprah because she was coming here to Lowell, Mass, um, for a conversation with Oprah at the, the school. That's where we met and that's where, uh, we went to college, uh, UMass Lowell. So, um, he let me bring my sister and said if she couldn't go then you know he would go with me but yes she went so we went to talk to, well we didn't go to talk to Oprah we went to listen to Oprah um, and was watching the weather the whole time hoping it would not snow snow was forecast it did end up snowing but um, not until right when we got there their were flurries that started um, by the time we got out yes it was definitely snowing but it was just a, a nice, relaxing conversation. There were two. I'll try to put in some of the pictures I took. Um, my phone wasn't zooming in great. Uh, they did have two big screens that you could see what was going on. But she stressed, not casually, but just comfortably. Um, and she just talked about, um, you know, the show, the things that she did during the show, one of the, the things that she didn't like. Um, one of the things I was surprised, she said she, um, I think one of her guests, like motivational speakers or something that she'd had on, had asked the question, what do you want? You want. Um, asked that question of, I guess, the guests. And, you know, she finally answered that question at the time. And she said she used to go to, she always used to stay after the show to sign autographs, like all these autographs and one day she had an appointment doctor's appointment so she couldn't stay so she went she realized how I guess how happier she was not having to be there not that she didn't appreciate her fans or anything but she said most of the time she barely lifted her head up she was just in there like I guess a um, assembly line just signing autographs and she's like what do I want I don't want to sign autographs anymore so she didn't you know and she also talked about um, um, one of her life coach guests that she had asked the audience, where do you, where do you rank um, women? Where do you rank yourself on the list of priorities? And she said, most people were either at the bottom or not even on the list. And you have to take care of you. You have to fill your cup before you can take care of any, anybody else. And once you fill your cup to overflowing, then all that overflow you can give out. It's there to give out to everybody else to, um, to share with everybody else. It's just think about when you're on an airplane and they say put that mask on before you can help anybody else. You got to take care of you before. And it's those things that you know, but you know, when you hear it, and I don't know if it's because you're hearing it from Oprah, but it's just sometimes you have to hear it from somebody else. Go, yeah, you know, you got to take care of you. You're just as much deserving as everybody else. And if you're not taking care of you, there's not much else to give. So it was just a great conversation. Um, great to listen to she also talked about the the school in Africa and how um, they had gone there to do charity work and um, Nelson Mandela had um, invited her and Stedman to stay with her with him and so for 10 days they got to share 29 meals with him she said she could even write a book about 29 meals with Mandela um, but she said even she was nervous. There's some mornings where she tiptoed because he was sitting in the room and she tried to tiptoe because it's a little overwhelming to be there. And he would go, Oprah. <laughs> she would have to go in and talk. But she said by the end of it, it was it got to a great point where she was just comfortable sitting at the table, not having to talk with him. And he would hand her a part of the newspaper, and you know it was it was a good thing. And she but one of the things that she mentioned was that her um, her school basically came about because of him because she was saying how one of the things that she always wanted was to build a school and like he oh you want to build a school and he called like the minister of whatever whatever and before you know it and she was like yeah I was just thinking about it thinking about it so there you go I guess it was just meant to be but it was 
lovely. And then at the end, um, they gave her an honorary doctorate of, oh, goodness gracious, I forget what it is, of humane letters. I think that's what it was. And one of the things that shocked everybody, um, it was quite a surprise, as part of the whole conversation and selling the tickets and all that around it, they raised $1.5 million for scholarships. And she, like, she matched it right there. And everyone's like, <gasps> you know, the the chancellor of the school and, and all the, the faculty that were there and all, they were just they were just as shocked as everybody else was. So it was pretty awesome. It was, it was a great night. The only thing that marred it is that we had to leave and deal with the snow. And it was coming down. Like, oh, when it snows here, I'm sure you guys who live in the snowy places, when it starts coming down and you have to drive in it, it just makes it so much worse. And the other thing is, trying to get out of that parking lot wow we literally sat and did not I probably moved like you know half an inch maybe trying to back out for like 36 37 minutes we hardly moved at all and there were a couple of um unpleasant people who pulled in into ways that you know trying to get in between people and yeah and my sister's like damn after all that like you know, spirituality you listen to and people just left and it just all flew out the window and people were just being their barbaric self all over again. But anyway, didn't dampen everything. Even though I had to drive, um, I couldn't let my, my sister took the train and we met there and I drove in and then um, I planned on driving her home anyway, but she was thinking of taking the train. There's no way I could let her take the train in that weather because she had to take two trains and a bus to get home and we didn't get out till um, after nine. So there was no way... So I drove very slowly in the rain, ah, not the rain, in the snow, and the roads were horrible. I did not see, I think maybe I saw one plow on the way home after driving her. The roads were terrible. People were making their own lanes. Um, and when it's coming down that fast, you know, you, you just lose the sense of what lane is what, but there was pretty some D-head people out there um, driving. Ugh. But anyway, um, it took me about to get home and come back, probably about three hours driving because it had to be a slow go because it was icy. It was, yeah, not fun. A couple of people in pickup trucks who think, you know, that's going to keep them from rolling over or whatever, sliding all over the place. But I digress. All the kumbaya I must absorb. <laughs> so that was Oprah. That was awesome. That was, that was Oprah. I was... It, it was arena style, but it wasn't like a huge, huge hall. So it was a great seat and you're able to see her just fine. And uh, it was, it was great. It was awesome. So that was Oprah. Um, okay, the other thing I talked about last time was um, business cards, um, and I'd mentioned that I had Moo cards that I had gotten once upon a time early on. I think before I actually did Vistaprint, I had gotten Moo first, and um, I didn't have them last time, but I did a little clip of what they are, because those are the ones that you can upload 13, at the time it was 13, I don't know if it's more now of your own photos and use that on one side of the card and then um, have your information on the other side. So I'll put in that little clip of what mine looked like that I still have there. All right. Um, I think, 
think, I think, I think, I think that is all. I'm trying to be organized. Okay, so quick. This is going on longer than I thought it would. Craft fair. Like I mentioned, I had two craft fairs. Um, the Saturday one I've done before. I've done two years before, and I was contemplating not doing it and trying something else, but I decided to do it. And um, this year it wasn't as... Um, What's the word? I don't want to down the craft fair for what it is. It just wasn't, wasn't well, um, what's the word? It just wasn't as good as the last two years. So I think it's just an opportunity to try something new. You know, I'm not married to it. It's just, you do it. If it works, it works. Um, I... The craft fair before that was so well run. It's the, the atmosphere is so different. Um, and the helpers they have are just so much better. They had helpers at this one on Saturday, but they just, they would help you and you figured they would stay in with you and finish off. They would help you do one load and next thing you're looking for them and they're like all over the place and helping this person, that person. I'm like, hello, just, can you just finish? <sighs> Maybe I'm just getting used to having helpers at certain ones. But it's always nice to have the helper so you don't have to carry everything in and out yourself. So um, that was good. But I may not be doing that one again, at least not next year, and see what else is out there. Because there were a lot of fairs around that same time, but I was already booked with this one. The one yesterday uh, on Sunday was my first time doing it. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I had to pause. I'm waiting for Minion 1 to call from football practice. Um, so the one yesterday on Sunday, it was the first time that I'd done it. Um, I was trying to make up for losing some fares in October. So I added a couple more. Um, it was, it turned out okay for being the first time it turned out okay. Um, but one of the things to keep in mind, if you take credit cards, you need to and I didn't make sure. And even if I had asked, they would have said, yes, they had Wi-Fi. But their Wi-Fi was not just their Wi-Fi, but the reception there at all. Because um, most of the time now, I have unlimited data, so I don't do Wi-Fi. I just use my phone. Um, but the reception was so terrible. So terrible. It cost me one sale. Um, that was like a $50 sale. Because the guy... Bless him. He waited long enough while I tried with the, the customer before him to try to get the credit card to go through. He waited quite a bit of time, but he had to leave. Uh, completely understandable, but uh, I was upset the whole time. It was, if anything, the, the venue where I was, uh, the setup was nice. I was in the gymnasium. It was through a school. So you walked in through the gym and then through a couple other um, areas of the school. I had a great spot. I was right in front of a mirror, so it was perfect for what I had. I didn't have to pull out my mirror. Everything was great. Um, but the reception made it so stressful, the, or the poor reception. And their Wi-Fi, they also had, um, they had two events going on at the school at the same time. So you had parents coming in and everybody on their phone. So that public Wi-Fi was just labored. And then after this one debacle with the sale where I tried like so many times to get it going, they actually gave me the password to the school, the staff um, access, and it still wasn't working. I just think the system was unloaded, overloaded, but just the reception itself. I could deal with the Wi-Fi not being able to get on, but not having any reception, it just kills your ability to do the any of the card, um, the card purchases. So keep that in mind. Um, and I haven't had anything that bad since the second show that I ever did. Um, you know, that show way back then, like people literally had to walk outside to get the things to read. Um, but this, this was very stressful. Otherwise, it was a nice show. Um, there were events that there were kids there, but um, my toys did not do as well as they normally do. Um, yeah, I just don't know if... People weren't aware so much of the show or what, but it is what it is. They said they're updating their Wi-Fi and their whatever they're updating next year. I honestly don't know if I'll do it. One, because it's a back-to-back -back show that I'm doing, and I don't know if I want to do that. Um, but we'll see how this coming weekend goes. Um, this one's actually at the college. 
that there's an event going on, a volleyball event. So hopefully it's a college and, you know, every college student has their phone. So we'll see how that goes too. Um, that's all I have now. Um, I can just tell it's getting darker and the lighting, my shadow. Um, I've got tons of laundry to fold. If I could hire me, the things I would do. Not to wash my clothes, but I'd have them folded. <laughs> and dust. <laughs> and a bunch of other things that I don't like doing. Anyway, um, I need to work on him to finish him up. I'm hoping to at least get half the body done tonight. Finish it off tomorrow, hopefully. And since it's the holiday weekend, I can get have some time to get that done. Family's coming. Was the hubby's idea both sides of the family so pray for me um i'm gonna do as little as possible because it wasn't my idea and i don't i don't like cooking i just tell me when to be there and i'll be there tell me what to bring and i'll bring i'm being bah humbug huh anyway um i keep this at my desk to keep me happy <laughs> look at that that was grumpy you just saw right there look at that <gasps> ah he was always smiling, and now he is the biggest curmudgeon teenager in the world. <sighs> anyway, on that note, if I've forgotten anything, I will, I don't know what I'll do next time, next weekend. Um, oh, I may put in a video for, like I did with the um, peaked cap. Of While I was looking for the pictures for those, I noticed I had quite a bit of the Wendy hat, which was very popular. Um but they then sold, they were tried on a lot. I had a big size and a small size. The small one was tried on a lot and surprisingly it fit the adult heads, but they didn't sell. But I have surprisingly a lot of those as well. So I might do a little um, show and tell video about that. And um, Regina, don't forget to email me and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.